we must, oh, we must check out Turntable Player. Looking on the side here, this is the Player album. And a nice list of drinks. You can see the back is decorated with a bunch of adult beverages, which I'm taking to mean sophistication. This is a sophisticated turntable. Tech support right on the box there at Outlook.com. Going over to this side, we can see the color choices. Brown, claret. I'm not sure what that color is. Black, coffee, or what we got, which is reddish brown. Okay, so we've got our power supply, our instructions. This is Markert brand UD001 turntable system, user manual, made in China. And let's go ahead and see what we got here. I'm gonna remove some of this packing material. The bulk of the unit slides right out. Nothing left in the box there, really. And do I have it upside down like I always do? Yes. So let me flip it top side and we will remove the packing material. Foam blocks on the edges. A handsome little unit, actually. I believe we've seen something very similar in the past. I'm not sure under what brand name, but let's go ahead and remove the plastic cling wrap that's holding this on. It will remove. All right, just like that. So it does have a clear dust cover. It's textured. That's kind of cool, actually. It's got kind of these ripples in it. That's really neat. That's unique. I've never seen anything like that. So this obviously is a compact unit. Even though it can play full-size records, it does have the smaller platter. It does have the dust cover here with the uh, opening so that the record can protrude. It's got opening on three sides, actually four. But I assume that's to allow the dust cover to close while the record is playing. And let's go ahead and lift the dust cover. Interesting. Okay, so it's got these little rubber feet and they were, you know, it was closed so long they were kind of stuck. So they kind of were adhered a little bit to the wood. But it lifts up and away nicely. And this is kind of handsome, actually. This doesn't look, ha this is sophisticated. <laughs> it looks pretty handy, pretty cool. The, pl the uh, platter obviously is plastic. This is the Skywind type of mechanism. I'm sure, or a variant therein. I have never seen one with this exact pattern on it. However, that's really kind of nice. Four points of contact. That's odd. Usually there's three rubber nubs. So the record rests on there. It does have an E-clip and then this would come off. It is inevitably belt driven. Let's see if we can spy the belt. A little bit hard to see there, but you can see the belt coming off the sub platter to the right onto the motor assembly, the spindle right there. All right, so we've got our familiar tone arm that we see on a lot of these. So the uh, counterbalance is preset. This is a metal uh, tone arm. It does have a cueing lever, which is nice and pretty soft descend. The shelf right here is pretty loose. That's pretty common. The actual gimbal assembly is actually fairly tight for these. You will see the whole thing is shock mounted for sound isolation purposes. It's a 45 adapter little piece of tape holding that on. I mean, it is a basic one, right? I'm not going to gripe about these anymore. I've said so many times that I wish that companies would invest in higher quality 45 adapters. I just don't think it's going to happen. Okay, so this does feature an auto stop. So if you want the record player to stop spinning at the end of the record, you can turn that either on or off. And here's the speed selector switch. It is three speeds. So you can play 33s, 45s, 78s. And if you want to get the best sound out of a 78, you will want to upgrade the stylus on this cartridge. This is going to be a Chuo Denshi clone ceramic cartridge. So nothing new there. Do you have a little finger lift on the front? Why is it kind of pointed forward? It turns out that the best way to leverage these oftentimes is just to push inward rather than to lift from underneath. So you can get better leverage by doing that. Um, let's see. If this has the higher end stylus housing or the low end. So as of the filming of this, this is the second turntable I've reviewed today and two times I've been pleasantly surprised because yes, even though this is an entry level ceramic cartridge, it does feature the higher end stylus housing. So you'll notice that the little pole on the bottom there, that is the cantilever that is metal. 
The very, very low end ones have a plastic cantilever, which is not ideal, but this one does have those improved inner workings. It also has a bridge, which is nice. And you will see a little reddish tint to the stylus itself. It's gonna be sapphire. So that's the only thing that isn't ideal. So a sapphire stylus tip is lower quality than diamond from the standpoint, not so much of sound quality, but from the standpoint of how fast it will wear out. Okay, so some specifications here while we're looking at the back. It is obviously belt driven. The speakers are three watts, so there's two of them. It does have Bluetooth capabilities, which is really interesting. So you can input a device, so you can listen to like your phone on this device. It does not transmit Bluetooth. You will see USB and you may be saying, that looks weird, why does that look weird? Well, typically on these devices, USB is used to digitize your vinyl into an MP3. And that's what you usually have in this circumstance. However, this is for th putting a thumb drive into the back of the unit and playing MP3 files on the device, which you can do. Obviously we've got RCA outputs, we've got the power connection, and just a good old fashioned aux input. Because of the fact this is a ceramic cartridge, this type of mechanism has been seen before, even though the, the platter itself is a little different, this is going to track five to six grams. So I'm not gonna even measure that. These are designed, these cartridges require five to six grams of downforce. It's not gonna damage your vinyl, it is going to wear them faster, but only minutely so. I am, however, curious to see how accurate the speed is going to be. So what we are going to do is put our strobe platter mat on. On the front, by the way, down here, we do have the uh, Bluetooth power light, headphone jack, and volume control on and off switch. So to turn on the turntable, we need to rotate the stylus across. And then we can look at those strobe markings. We are locked and loaded at 33 RPM, which is this ring right here. And amazingly, this thing is almost dead accurate on speed for 33, which is great. Let's go up to 45, which is going to be right here. Okay, now 45 is marching to the left, so that is indeed a bit fast. That's actually right about the borderline where you start hearing pitch problems or pitch differences because of the speed. And at the top there, 78 RPM is fast as well. So we could make adjustments to bring those speeds back in line, but all of that really doesn't matter if it doesn't sound good, right? So let's go ahead and give it a listen, see how robust these speakers are. And if the sound that you're hearing of my voice sounds a little different, I'm just using the front facing stereo mics to give you the best representation of the speakers here. To my ears, it is definitely loud enough, decent range on the speakers. They're definitely not gonna blow your mind away or blow your perceptions of the sound away, I should say. They are, they're adequate. Okay, just trying a couple different tracks here. Definitely an eclectic record, but that's part of what's fun about it. You know, I think this looks really good. Actually, it's very compact, very, very compact. And it's it's got good finishing touches. I mean, I like the wood finish. I like the vintage speaker grills. The mechanism is adequate. The sound is adequate. This wouldn't be half bad as either a beginner system for somebody or as a secondary system, maybe an office or a kitchen where you didn't have a lot of space. I think that those would be a couple applications that would work well. Let's check out the MP3 playback via USB. So I'm just gonna take my thumb drive here and insert it into the back if I can reach it. And it just starts playing automatically. Now the glaring issue I see here is how do you change tracks? I don't think there's a way to skip forward or back. It's just sort of a continuous play once you stick that guy into the USB drive. <laughs> Now 
this system I think would be really good if you just wanted sort of an ambient player, something playing music in the background. If you had a store and you wanted to play records sort of as a novelty for customers, that's a really weird random <laughs> use case. But a couple ideas that come to mind. If you're brand new to vinyl, this would be probably a good option if you, you know, just wanted to start with a small compact unit that had some features. It does have the headphone jack, so if you live in an apartment, you would be able to, well, you'd have modest speakers to begin with if you wanted speakers to play quiet or you didn't want to bother your neighbors or your roommates and you can always use that headphone jack. So anyway, just a couple ideas there, but you know, I'm pleasantly surprised with this.